everyone, welcome to a reading vlog. So I'm back with another installment of Do I Like This Author? Uh, this is a series of vlogs that I'm doing to kind of determine how I feel about a particular author. Uh, so each time take an author that I have read one or two books from, that they have a lot of backlist, and read three of their books all at once to kind of determine how do I feel about this author? Do I want to read more of their work? Are there certain things, like certain books of theirs that I like more than others? Things like that. Uh, I have already done one of these, which I will link in the description. It was for T. Kingfisher. Uh, but today we are talking about Patricia McKillop. So Patricia McKillop uh, is an author that is often lumped in with other authors like uh, Robin McKinley and Juliet Marillier. A lot of her books are very short, fairy tale esque fantasy. I think a few of them may be actual fairy tale retellings, but I think more often than not they are more like original fairy tales, things that have a really strong like fairy tale feel to them. Uh, but yeah, they're usually pretty short and pretty, uh, I would say, light on the fantasy. They're pretty light on the world building and, you know, and characters and things. They're just kind of like fun and cozy, I guess. Uh, she has a definite like cozy feel to her books. So I've already read two books from her and I liked one and I didn't like the other. So I want to figure out once and for all, how do I feel about her books? Uh, I My prediction for this is that I am going to generally like her books uh, and that the book that I didn't like is probably more so from my own expectations going into that book more than how like her actual books. The first book that I read from her was The Forgotten Beasts of Eld, which is one of her most popular, most well-known books. Uh, but I wasn't a big fan of it and I think that is because I went in with the wrong mindset because I read her book because she is often recommended for fans of Julia Morillier's books. And there are definitely reasons for that because, you know, they're both women writing fantasy in like the 90s, early 2000s, have like fairy tale retellings, a cozy feel to their books, things like that. They're definite connections, but they're kind of doing very different things with those similar ingredients, right? Julia Morillier's books, I think, go a little more in depth into the characters and their emotional experiences. Her, her books, while they are kind of cozy, can have some very like dark moments in them. Her characters can go through some harrowing experiences. Patricia McKillop's books have a very different vibe to them. They aren't very, uh, they don't really go in depth on the world building and magic or on, I think like they don't really go uh, deep on characters and their emotions. I think it has a more of a, lightness or a light touch to the storytelling. And I don't mean that in like a negative way to be like, oh, it's just light fantasy. Like I don't mean it to be dismissive because uh, it really is just what are you looking for? What are you in the mood for or wanting out of the story that you're reading? Sometimes you want something that is just light and fun and easy to read. And I think that's more what Patricia McKillop's books are like. Anyways, I think that the reason that I didn't uh, like The Forgotten Beasts of Eld was because I went into it expecting more of like the depth of, you know, character development and emotional arcs and things that I get out of Juliet Marillier's books when that's not what Patricia McKillop is doing. And so I was disappointed. But then more recently, I read another Patricia McKillop book, uh, which was odd magic and I had a great time reading it and I think it's because I went in with the right expectation because I had read one of her books before and I knew what it was like what it is that she's doing and it was delightful so that was kind of a long explanation of my uh experience and feelings with Patricia McKillop's books but I want to read more of her stuff because I think that I like her. My theory is that I like her as an author. I My previous bad experience was just from my own mindset and expectations. But now I know better, so we're trying again. Okay, so I have two books that I definitely am going to be reading for this, and then there's a third one that 
might be switched out I'm not totally sure so we'll start with the Changeling C uh, so this is a middle grade from by her I think in this there's a little girl that we're following who has some kind of magic over the ocean she uses her magic one day and then the, a changeling prince appears to her and then she has to help him I guess uh, we're gonna get more into the actual plots of these <laughs> as I, you know, read them and actually know what's going on. I have a very cursory knowledge of what these books are actually about at this point. Uh, but this is one that I, every time I mention this in a video, I always get a couple comments <laughs> of people being like, oh, I read this as a kid and I loved it. It's so good. People are very fond of this book. Uh, so I'm excited to get to that. Then I also want to get to the Riddle Master of Head. So this is a bind up of all three books in the trilogy. Uh, the first book, I'm only planning to read the first book for this vlog. And so that's only about 187 pages. It's this much of the book. Um, but this is an adult fantasy. And in it, we're following the Prince of Head. He wants to just live the life that he was intending as the prince. He wants to rule his people and his land, uh, but finds out that he has some greater destiny quest that he has to go on. Uh, and so that's what we're following him on, as far as I can tell. Uh, but these two, I think, are her other two, like, most well-known, most popular books. It's really the Riddle Master trilogy, uh, the Changeling Sea and The Forgotten Beasts of Eld, I think are kind of her most well-known work. So I wanted to get to the other well-known ones that she has. Uh, and then the third one that I'm gonna read for the vlog is kind of up in the air. I do have a third book from her, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna read it. Uh, it is In the Forest of Ser, or is it Ser or Sere? I Or some other pronunciation I'm not thinking of. But uh, I think, in this, there is uh, like a soldier who, like on his way home from the war, gets cursed by a witch. And then I think the main character that we're following is going to uncurse him. I don't really know. Uh, but I could read this because I already have it. But I also could uh, listen to the audiobook for some other books from her. These are just kind of other random ones that I don't think are one she's particularly well known for. So I don't have a specific reason for reading any one of them other than just like what mood I'm in. So it could be this one. It could be a different one that's uh, if I can get the audiobook for it. We'll see. We'll, we'll decide later. But I am going to start with the Riddle Master of Head uh, because I am buddy reading this with Kara and our buddy read starts tomorrow. So I need to get on it with this one. All right, so I'm about to film some videos. So if I'd take this chance uh, while I have my camera set up to do a quick update on the Riddle Master, uh, the Riddle Master of Head. So I got about 40% of the way into this and I've DNF'd it. So not starting off this vlog strong, but uh, let me, okay, I I don't really know how to explain what this book is about because honestly, I don't know. Uh, what I do know about it is that we start out following Morgan, who is one of the princes of Head, uh, which is a farming country. A few years ago, uh, his parents died. And then after that, he went on some kind of like quest to solve an unsolvable riddle, which he did. He got a crown from it. There was a king from a different country that said, whoever, uh, you know, solves this unsolvable riddle and gets this crown can marry my daughter. So then uh, Morgan sets out to go like claim his bride, essentially. That's that's all I know. Then like a bunch of other things happen that seem like they're going to be plots and then they're just not. <laughs> There's so little that is explained in this book. While I was reading it, it just felt like, it felt like this wasn't even the first book. Like I started the first chapter and immediately was like, is this actually the first book? Is there another book before this that I missed? Because the way it was, 
talking about these characters and the world, it really felt like there was an assumption that like, you already knew all of this backstory, you already knew all of this world building, you already knew these characters and these established relationships. And like, I've read books before where they just kind of dump you into a story and you have to figure it out as you go. And I've seen that work really well. Like I'm not against that style of world building, but I don't think that this did that successfully. It really just felt, it was so confusing, not because it was complicated, but just because nothing was being told to us. And it was this weird, just like assumption that you knew all of this information. So there wasn't a need to explain it, except that there was because I have no idea what's going on, who any of these people are. I can't tell anybody apart. I have no investment in any of these relationships because no setup has been done. And yet it's acting as if I should know all of these things and feel all of these things. It was just really frustrating. Um, it got to a point, so I I tried, I like read a little bit of it physically. I also listened to the audiobook for this. And it got to a point where I just felt like I'm not even reading this book because like I'm reading the words or I'm listening to the words and yet none of it means anything to me. And it's just like washing over me and I'm retaining nothing. So I'm like, yeah, I'm reading it, but I feel like I'm not actually reading this book. Um, so I was just like, if I finished this, I don't know if I would feel like I could even legitimately count it as read like on Goodreads because I don't feel like I've read the book, you know? Um, there's just a lot of things also like it's kept starting plot lines like things that would feel like it was going to be a plot line and then it would just be like just kidding we're not doing that anymore and like there's one point where the main character like gets into a shipwreck and loses his memory and then he's like living with this hermit um, while he's like trying to get his memory back and then that's like one chapter and it's an incredibly boring chapter, but then the next chapter he gets his memory back. And not that I really wanted to spend more time with that like lost memory plotline because it wasn't interesting, but like if you're going to solve it in the next chapter, why even introduce that as a plot line? They also don't explain what the significance of riddles are in this world. Like, this is literally called the Riddle Master Trilogy, okay? We know that riddles are important in this world. Uh, we do find out that there apparently is some, like, school that you can go to that is just about riddles, that you just, like, learn how to solve riddles, write riddles, think about riddles. And apparently Morgan went to that school, so he's like super good at riddles. And that you can become essentially like an academic at that school and your whole life is just dedicated to riddles. There was also this like really important unsolvable riddle, like riddles are super important to this world. And yet I have no idea why. There is no explanation about the significance of riddles to this world. I don't know if it's magical. I don't know if it's cultural. I have zero idea. Anyways, I just like reading, I went and read some other reviews for this and I just am like, am I even reading the same book that other people are reading? Because apparently other people understood what was going on in this and I just am like, what is happening? I generally feel like I'm pretty good at like just going into a fantasy book and you know, being able to pick up on what's going on and understanding world building and have a pretty high tolerance for like being like, you know what, I don't, maybe I don't get everything right now, but I'll figure it out eventually. But like, oh my god, I just was like so frustrated with this. Anyways, I DNF'd this because I just was like having a terrible time. I just was like, I hate this. Uh, and as I said, I just feel like I wouldn't even be able to say that I had read the book because I just was like, none of this means anything to me. Um, and I was thinking like, I cannot imagine a situation in which this would get more than like two stars, if that, like that would be generous. So that is my rant about the Riddle Master of Head um, and why I DNF'd it. But we're going to continue on and hope that maybe I will find something else from Patricia McKillop that I can enjoy. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking next up, 
I'm probably going to try, I think it's called The Bard of Bone Plain, because uh, I can get the audiobook for that one. I decided I wanted to go uh, for an audiobook and try that one out. Uh, I think uh, my, my mom read that book, or she might be reading it right now because we were talking about Patricia McKillop the other day, and she was enjoying it, so I feel like maybe that one will be a good, uh, a good next book to try out from Patricia McKillop. So that's the plan. So I started reading The Bards of Bone Plain. I don't know if in my last clip I said that was the next book I was going to, uh, but I started reading The Bards of Bone Plain and in this we are following a bunch of different perspectives, but there are basically two timelines that we're following. Uh, so in the more modern timeline where like, I don't think this takes place like on earth. I think that it is some magical world, but they do have cars. However, I think that they are more recent inventions in this world. So that doesn't really tell us anything about timeline because it's not like it's on earth's timeline, but whatever. But in the more modern timeline, we're following a few different perspectives, one of which is Phelan or Phelan, I don't know how you pronounce his name, uh, but he is a student at a university that is very well, very, very like prestigious. They teach people about like riddles and, um, you know, bar it's like a bardic school, I think. Ra uh, Patricia McKillop has some very clear themes around like bards, musicians, riddles, you know, things like that. Um, but there's this bardic school that he goes to. He kind of goes to the school to please his father. He's not really invested in it. He's almost done though with uh, his schooling. He just has to complete his like final paper and he is going to do it on uh, the Bone Plane, which is this kind of like a theoretical place. Uh, it's something that has been uh, mythologized and studied many, many times, uh, but there, no one has really been able to prove whether Bone Plane truly exists. Then we also uh, follow his father who likes to search for like ancient ma ancient artifacts uh, and he hires people who are essentially like archaeologists kind of finding these artifacts for him. Um, but he's also like a uh, source of lots of information on history and stuff like that. He's kind of eccentric and disappears for long periods of time. One of the other characters we're following is, I think her name's Princess Beatrice. So she is a princess who has been hired uh, by Phelan's father as like one of these kind of archeologists digging up uh, artifacts. Uh, so she is also like very invested in these artifacts. Um, and yeah, and so we're following all of these characters as they are kind of going about their lives. And then we also are following a timeline that is further back in their in their history, where we are following uh, mainly a character named Nairn, who is a bard, and he eventually joins what will become this bardic school. So we kind of are essentially getting all of the backstory about how this bardic school was established uh, and some of its like first members and students and like the initial intent. So they all, it all is connected to this one school, but we're following these two different timelines. Uh, other than that, I don't really know what the plot is. Like I understand what is happening like moment to moment in the story, but I don't really understand what the plot, of, like the overarching plot of the book is yet. Where is this going, you know? And also, how are these two storylines connected? Other than like they are both about this school, I'm assuming they are going to become more connected at some point. Uh, and 
yeah, that it'll just like become more clear because if that's the only connection between the two, I don't think that's going to be very interesting or be like a great story. I'm assuming at some point these like <laughs> storylines will converge, maybe the timelines will kind of like, you know, converge at some point. I don't really know where it's going so far. Um, but thoughts on it so far? I don't have like really strong opinions on it. I kind of wish I had a stronger sense of where the story was going, but I am enjoying it. You know, I like some of the themes, like, like you're saying, uh, Patricia McKillop has some very definite, consistent like themes, tropes, types of characters that she likes to use, bards and, you know, doing stuff with riddles and stuff like that. At the moment, um, I don't have, like I'm enjoying you know, going along for the ride of the story so far. I don't have really strong feelings about the story itself uh, or any of the characters, although I am more invested, I think, in the, uh, in Nairn's story. So the story that is about the backstory and establishment of the school. That's the storyline that's kind of intriguing me a little bit more, but we get less of it because we're really only following one perspective in that timeline and we're following like three or four perspectives in the more modern timeline so we get a little bit more time there. But overall, it's going fine. <laughs> All right, so I have finished The Bards of Bone Plain and overall I think it was okay. I, so okay, some things that I liked about it. Um, I enjoy some aspects of Patricia McKillop's writing. I think that she does really nice descriptions of things. This one was really focused on music and so there were some really nice like very magical descriptions of music. I didn't have really strong feelings about a lot of the characters but I did really like the king. He's a very minor character in this um, but whenever he popped up I just enjoyed him a lot. The two storylines or the two uh, timelines that I was talking about do eventually uh, not exactly converge but like we see the connection because that was my main question when I was reading the first half is like how are these two things connected other than the fact that they're both like have something to do with this school we do get like a clearer like story plot connection to how are these two timelines like what do these two timelines have to do with each other so I really was happy about that. I think the concept was interesting. I really liked the way in which they were connected. Uh, however, I do think that if I, like if I was writing the story, I would have focused the story somewhere else. I would have focused more on the uh, timeline in the past who are following Nairn who is not the person who established the Bardic school but he attends, he's one of the first people to attend the Bardic school. Uh, I would have really like focused on his storyline and I like I can't tell you too much about what his storyline is about and why it was more interesting without spoiling things about the story but I think that his storyline was much more interesting. I think that it really could have warranted a lot more attention. We get a really quick montage of some stuff that he's gone through and like I want to have like experienced that with him uh, and I think that that would have made it a very different story. It would have made it much probably darker and heavier as a story but I think it would have been a lot more interesting and would have allowed to really dive into his character. But I think that character-wise, the characters were fine, they were likable, I really liked the king, uh, but other than that I just have no strong feelings about them and I really would have loved to dive more deeply into these characters and have a more development for them or more of like an emotional stake in them as characters. Also there's like a romance in it that I feel like comes out of nowhere. Um, and it just, there are like a lot of instances of character that I feel like could have been expanded on. But also just like storytelling wise, there are a lot of, I feel like there are a lot of uh, loose plot threads that just never tied back. And it wasn't in a like, oh, it's open-ended kind of intentional way. It just was like, 
well then why did you like tell me about this or like why did you make a big deal about this if it was just not that it was even like not real it just was dropped you know so it just felt kind of unfinished or like there were things that needed to be like it didn't feel very complete as a story as a world all of these things uh, so there are a lot of elements of ideas that I liked in this but a lot of execution that I just like was not a fan of all right so the last book that I have for this vlog is The Changeling Sea uh, and this one hopefully I like it because so far well, the first one I DNF'd and the second one got three stars with a lot of question marks. So I'm really hoping that I can enjoy this book uh, and that this will like save my opinion of Patricia McKillop. I feel like that's a lot of pressure to put on like one book and it's such a tiny one. It's like 130 pages. Um, but this is where I'm going next. Good morning. It is a very gloomy day out today, but last night... I finished The Changeling Sea, which I ended up liking, which I'm very excited about. Uh, but first, let me explain a little bit about what this book is about. So in this, um, it is set in a small seaside fishing town, and our main character is Periwinkle, Perry for short. Um, her father was a fisherman and he disappeared at sea, and when her father disappeared, Perry's mother kind of shut down and disconnected from the world uh, and so Perry is the one who is really keeping them going. She has a job at like the local inn washing floors and washing dishes uh, and she is very angry. She's angry at the sea, she's angry at losing her father, she's angry at her mother for checking out um, and so one day she decides to hex the sea uh, and before she does that the prince shows up uh, and tells her about how he has this real connection to the sea that he doesn't fully understand, but he wants to send a message to the sea and he wants her to send it for him when she hexes it. Oh, I just hit my tripod. <laughs> um, and so he gives her this like bundle of items with a message to throw into the sea with her hexes and she does that not really expecting much to come out of it but her hexes seem to have some some effect on the sea because the next day a sea dragon appears with a giant gold chain around its neck. Perry is kind of trying to figure out what is going on with this dragon because everyone else is much more focused on getting the gold chain and she's a little more interested in like why is there a dragon in the sea? Uh, and how did this all come about? Um, so she starts getting to know one of the magicians. Uh, she also talks more to the prince and learns more about his backstory and his connection to the sea. I'll stop there because it's a very short book so I don't want to get too far into like what else happens in it. But I ended up really enjoying this. Um, I think that for one thing, Patricia McKillop gives you some actual context for this story, which I deeply appreciate. So she gives you a little bit of like actually explaining things about these characters, a little bit about their past, uh, how they're feeling. I just feel like she gave more context to the story. Maybe she does that because it's a middle grade and she feels like it's not necessary in her adult work, her adult works, which like I would beg to differ because I feel like her adult books definitely need more context to them. Not like huge amount of exposition, but just like a little bit more to kind of ground you in what's going on and like the the background of uh, of like the world or the people. Anyways, she did give a little bit of that context in this one, which I really appreciated. Uh, and I think that it just made the story much more engaging and the characters more interesting. I'm a big fan of context, apparently. There were some things about the pacing in this that were a little hit or miss for me. Um, 
Like there were some points in the story where I felt like it dragged a bit. Relationships or like trust between characters that just happened really quickly. However, that didn't bother me as much just because I was like, it's a really short book. And so sometimes things have to move a little faster. But I ended up enjoying this. It reminded me sometimes of Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. Uh, so I think that fans of that might enjoy this. All right, so while I was editing this, I realized that I didn't do a wrap up for this vlog. So I'm back to do a final summary wrap up thoughts about this whole experience. So first of all, wrap up of what I read in this vlog. First, uh, Riddle Master of Head, I DNF'd it, uh, mostly because I had no idea what was going on. It felt like there was an assumption that you knew more about this world and these characters, which I did not. Uh, and so I just felt very disconnected from it and also like I just had no idea what was happening, so I wasn't even reading the book. Then I read The Bards of Bone Plain, which went a little bit better because I actually finished the book and I gave it three stars. Uh, that one, I liked some of the descriptions in it, I liked the concept of the story. There are things that I would change about where to focus the story and kind of how to tell it, but that would have really changed the nature of the story, and that's not really what Patricia McKillop was doing, so she and I might just have different opinions about how to tell a story, you know? Uh, but there were also some things that were plot lines that were just really left, like plot threads that were just left or abandoned uh, that I think should have been tied up or removed if you weren't going to use them. And then finally I read The Changeling Sea, which I uh, enjoyed. It I liked the vibes of it and it kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Howl's Moving Castle, so I gave it 3.5 stars. So some overall thoughts about this. One thing that I've been thinking about while I was reading these books, especially while reading Bards of Bone Plain, was wondering if any of Patricia McKillop's books are set in the same world. Because she has these really common like elements to her stories, especially being about bards, music, riddles, bardic schools. Uh, because a bardic school is very central to Bards of Bone Plain, but a bardic school about riddles is also mentioned in the Riddle Master books. And so as far as I can tell, these are not set in the same world. They're not talking about the same school. However, I feel like it would be cool or like it would have worked really well if all of her books were set in the same world. It is a critique that I had heard from some reviewers uh, that her books are kind of repetitive in the types of stories they're telling because they all are about like bards and riddles, which I don't completely agree with as a critique, partially because like there are people who every book they write is about warriors and nobody bats an eye, so why can't all her books be about bards? However, I do think that if she's going to have these very consistent uh, things in her books, having them all set in the same world and this world that revolves around like bards and music and riddles would kind of solve for that problem because then it would just feel like a consistent part of the world building not that like her books are repetitive in uh the story in like the story elements i also personally feel like that would work out well because it would help with fleshing out that world building I think it would have been really cool if Bards of Bone Plain was about like how this bardic school was established and then that same bardic school was then referenced in the Riddle Master of Head. So then that is a way of fleshing out that world building. I don't think that is the case of her stories. I don't think that they are talking about the same bardic school. I don't think they're set in the same world. I just think that would be a good idea. Now for my overall feelings about her as an author for me personally to read. Well, I I think my original prediction was proven incorrect. Uh, so at the beginning of this, I kind of set out with the thought that uh, a previous book that I had not liked from her, The Forgotten Beasts of Eld, was probably because of my own mindset and expectations going into the book and that I would enjoy more of her work. I think that has been proven wrong. 
Uh, there are definitely books from her that I do really enjoy. Like I liked Odd Magic, I liked uh, The Changeling Sea, and there are some things about uh, The Bards of Bone Plain that I enjoyed as well. So it's not like I wholly dislike her books. However, there are also clearly books from her that the world building, character development, emotional arcs just really aren't there for me. So I think going forward, uh, I probably will not really intentionally pursue Patricia McKillop as an author and her books. That doesn't mean I would never read anything from her again. One book that I am considering reading is Alphabet of Thorns. I've heard some really good things about it and that's another one actually that my mom read and really liked it and when we were talking about the Bards of Bone Plain she was saying that Alphabet of Thorn is much better than Bards of Bone Plain uh, and she and I had similar issues with Bards of Bone Plain so I feel like I might still try Alphabet of Thorn. Other than that I don't think I'm really going to dive more into Patricia McKillop's books uh, although I guess I do still own The Forest of Ser, so I'll have to decide if I'm going to read that or not because I have the book. So maybe I'll read that one too. And that's where I'm landing with her books. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts about any of Patricia McKillop's books or about her as an author or what you think about her world building. If you've run into any similar issues or if you think that there are particular books of hers that you think do the providing any form of context or world building that you think do it well, I'd love to know. Uh, or just any other thoughts you want to share with me in the comments. I hope you all enjoyed this vlog. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!